Global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Global Happiness Today. The likes of David Omahi, the president or chairman of the Southeastern Governors Forum, has been trending for hours now. And it looks like his fate is hinged on what INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission, will do or will not do to determine whether he stays on the seat or not. Despite the fact that a court ruling has sacked him out of the seat, an opposing court ruling has actually also reinstated him, insisting that um, it's null and void. That's the Abuja State State Chapter of um, the Federal Court, uh, while the Federal High Court of Abuja had actually sacked him. Same country, same governor, different verdict. But it looks like INEC will finally have a final say over this matter. In a moment, you're going to find out what the dynamics of where INEC is coming from and what the fate of um, the, the governor of Ebony State will look like in coming days, weeks, or even months, as the case may be. But before we go into the news proper, I would like you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button beside it. You'll see bell notification icon. Please go ahead. Click on it to get notified as soon as we update our channel on YouTube. Let's go straight into the news of the day. Well, well, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has finally issued a statement on the recent sacking of David Mahi as governor of Ebony State and his deputy chief, Kelechi Igwe. The commission revealed that it was yet to be served the certified true copy of the Federal High Court that sacked Omahi and Igwe. Mr. Festus Okoye, the INEC National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, disclosed this in an interview with, Abu in an interview with journalists in Abuja. The Commission has not been seen. I think that again. The Commission has not been served with a copy of the said judgment. The commission will meet and take a decision when it is served with a certified true copy of the judgment, Okoye said. Recall that the Federal High Court in Abuja, presided over by Justice Inyangoku on Tuesday, ordered Governor Omahi to vacate office after his defection from PDP to the All Progressive Congress, APC. Justice Egu in the judgment, also ordered Dr. Kelechi Igwe to stop parading himself as the deputy governor of the state. He declared that having defected from the PDP, that's People Democratic Party, under which platform they came into power, the duo were deemed to have resigned from the office and hence no longer entitled to be called governor and deputy governor. The judge said it was constitutionally wrong for a candidate elected into an office on the platform of, of a political party to defect to another political while still in office. Hmm. This one is also constitutional too. Uh, let's find out exactly what Ezra Homer said concerning the same political um, constitutional rights of both an elected governor who decides to defect and the right of the people. What? where he stands from. In his reaction, Chief Mike Ozehome, senior advocate of Nigeria, said the judgment cannot stand the scrutiny of the appeal court. I quote him, I am of the firm belief that the judgment shredded of all legal and factual details cannot stand the acid test of constitutionalism, nor pass the fullness of appellate court scrutiny. This is because the tenor of office of a, of a governor and his deputy are constitutional matters. The judgment is said to have sacked Governor David Omaya and his deputy Eric Kelechi Igwe from the offices. He cited section 222, section 221 of the constitution which merely prohibits political activities by certain associations which are not political parties from canvassing for votes or contributing to election expenses of any candidate at any election. The judge ordered the PDP to immediately send names of replacements to INEC so that fresh election can be conducted. He also ordered INEC to cease recognizing Omahi and Igwe as governor 
and deputy governor respectively of a state the land trial judge further held that the 393,042 vote pulled by Umahi in the March 9, 2019 governorship election belonged to the PDP and cannot be legally transferred to APC upon defection, and that there is no constitutional provision that made the ballot transferable from one party to another. He therefore ordered INEC to conduct fresh election in accordance with section 177 subsection c of the constitution not so fast the enforcement of this judgment the governor and his deputy have 90 days to appeal this decision under section 25 subsection 2 subsection a of the court of appeal act it is their right under sections 240 and 241 of the constitution the judgment being a final one the ju this judgment cannot survive appellate security. Perhaps the jury, the jurist learned attention was not drawn to appellant decisions on this type of matter, which under the doctrine of stead diseases and judicial precedent, he ought to have followed meticulously. He may also not have been availed of the clear provisions of section 180 and 188 of the 1999 constitution. Vote actually belongs to individuals and not political party. The appellate courts have since held again and again that votes cast in election belong to life candidates and not political party, which merely serves as a vehicle that enthrones candidates. The judges, the judge in his judgment, had agreed with PDP, which relied on section 221, 177, subsection C, 106, subsection D, 65, subsection 2. Subsection B of the Constitution by substantiating its argument that votes belong to the political parties and that it is impossible for candidates to exist without a political party. The case of Inge versus Akuyili, 2012, 15 NWRPT 1323, and so on, which came much later over overruled this position. The court held in that case that one. It is my considered view that the appellant is relying on the provision quoted above, has conveniently lost sight of the underlined words which show that political party canvasses for votes on behalf of candidates. In other words, that the political party is nothing more than an agent of candidates in gathering votes on election. It is my further view that it is against the backdrop of this that the electoral act supra requires the candidate and not the party of the candidate that has the highest number of votes at an election to be declared as the winner of the said election and further provides for the means of challenging the return of the candidate and not his political party. He also pointed out uh, section, two, section 308 of the Nigerian Constitution grants absolute immunity to president, vice president, governor, and deputy governor while in office. According to the Senior Advocate of Nigeria, consequently, no civil or criminal proceedings could ever sustain against the set of persons while still holding office. Being that they are both plethoral of authorities, I humbly submit that governor already that a governor already sworn in cannot be removed by the Federal High Court through an originating summons. It will surely be set aside on appeal. <laughs> Let's meet in that conversation. What's the take on this?